drive east on University Avenue through City Heights with all the shop signs in Vietnamese, and you may wonder if you've been transported to Saigon. But for the 60,000 Vietnamese in San Diego, it's a taste of home. Good evening, I'm Gloria Penner. It's been 30 years since Saigon fell to communist Vietnam, causing tens of thousands of refugees to flee their homeland. More than 40,000 settled in San Diego. Today, the Vietnamese community here numbers more than 60,000, with the median age of Vietnamese Americans pegged at 30. Many are too young to remember the old country. For others, the emotional upheaval of leaving the homeland and adapting to life in America is still fresh. Tonight we'll talk about these resettled survivors of the controversial Vietnam War with two people who came to the United States as refugees and an aid worker who helped refugees resettled here. How do a people who have lost virtually everything manage to rebuild their spirit and their livelihood? We begin with an excerpt from the documentary A Hand up by independent producer Jody Hammond. It tells the little-known story about a business that gave many Vietnamese refugees renewed hope. Visit a nail salon in your neighborhood, especially if you live in the southwestern United States, and three times out of four, you'll find Vietnamese immigrants hard at work. It's an economic niche for many Vietnamese American women. Uh, because you can start a business uh, with very little money down and you can have limited skills, uh, limited education, and limited English language um, abilities. There are few nail salons in Vietnam, mostly in larger cities. A manicure is a luxury, even for the bargain price of less than a dollar. Since most Vietnamese immigrants aren't bringing this skill with them from their homeland, why have so many decided to make nail care their chosen profession in the U.S.? It's a story that starts back in 1975 with a Hollywood twist. Actress Tippi Hedren is best known for starring in the Alfred Hitchcock classic, The Birds. But she played another role off screen that few people are aware of. I do have a very special place in my heart for the Vietnamese people. Hedren was a regular visitor to Camp Hope as the first wave of Vietnamese refugees arrived. They had lost everything. We tried to help them with every phase of getting into the American stream of life. Hedren befriended a group of women at Camp Hope, determined to come up with a way they could make a living once they left the camp. I think uh, one day, uh, one of the girl looked at her fingernails, the nails are so beautiful. That's what brings the ideas to her, you know, I said, oh, maybe you, she introduced us to a manicuring class. One of the things I did think about was um, manicuring. And uh, at that time, I had a really wonderful manicurist. Uh, his name was Dusty, and um, I asked if she would like to come up to help these women. Hedren flew up her personal manicurist once a week from Los Angeles to teach the women, who then went on to attend a nearby beauty college. Tuan Lee was grateful for the opportunity. All of us decide we will finish the class because we want to have a profession in America. Lee was one of 20 women in that first class of Vietnamese manicurists. They passed the cosmetology course at a nearby beauty college and then the California manicurist exam. Lee continues to work with the same company where Hedren found her a job in 1975. That is, after Lee showed Hedren she could do a proper manicure. And I have to do the whole ten fingers for her, and I'm so shaky. But after I finish her nails, she said, you are all right, you can have a job. Along with the job came a personal letter from Hedren. Uh, this is a good advice from Tippi Hedren. She, tell me, she told me, remember, time is money. And the faster you can do a perfect manicure, the more customers you you can do in a day. Look how beautiful you are. Yeah, Chewie's going to be back next week. Hedren now lives on a compound north of Los Angeles, heading a foundation that rescues exotic animals. She still keeps in touch with some members of the class of 75. 
In the decades since, nails have become big business. It's a $6 billion a year industry, with Vietnamese-run salons making up at least a third of the market nationally. Mr. Dat's family. The explosion in the number of Asian salons has provided comedian Dat Fan with some of his most popular material. Thank you. I'm Vietnamese. Vietnamese people in beauty salons. How the hell this come together? <laughs> well, it was our plan of attack on the American economy there. What was the final meeting when we left Vietnam? Vietnam, this is not this is a final meeting. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. I know the perfect job for us. <laughs> Vietnam, we take over by doing pedicure. That's how we take over. Okay, Dead Fan, as we saw, you are the comedian and your eldest sister does run a beauty salon. So how did you decide to make this part of your comedy routine? Well, Gloria, um, I needed to pay for rent, so I <laughs> had to come up with material. Now, you know, it's, it's, uh, my act is based on my life. And my sisters, they, they, they own a nail salon in San Diego, in Point Loma. And actually, I say about four or five of my sisters do nails and cut hair. And I actually went to prom, high school prom and nail salon money. But weren't you worried about playing into stereotypes of, you know, all Vietnamese women are a manicurist? I play into the truth. And the truth is, is that we have a third of the nail salon, uh, nail salons across America are run by Vietnamese people. That's a pretty high percentage. And, um, you know, my life is a stereotype, you know. I, I, well, actually, not exactly. I mean, I did fail math, and I date white girls. So <laughs> some things break the mold. But, you know, I, I, nail salons, they own a nail salon. Okay. I, I'm not ashamed of it, you know. All right, just just checking it out. Let me turn to you, uh, and, uh, Neep um, Lee. You're, you're president of the Vietnamese Federation of San Diego. And there does seem to be a lot of small businesses here in San Diego that are owned by Vietnamese. So are we seeing a sort of a, a strong entrepreneurial streak in the Vietnamese community? Uh, it is all right. Uh, it is true, uh, Gloria. The, uh, there's two reasons for that, because uh, the entrepreneur spirit of the Vietnamese people uh, come from a very difficult situation, so they're used to hard work. Uh, and besides that, it is a lot easier for them to find something that they can do as a family unit uh, and that will help them to to overcome uh, some of the difficulties uh, such as the language barriers if they go to work for a company or some places they, they run into that problem especially when we first came to the United States so you're, you're saying that, that they, they kind of cluster together because of, of the concern over language, but that, does that mean that they don't go into any of the professions? Are we not seeing them going on to, to college and maybe becoming doctors, lawyers, teachers? Oh yes, uh, actually education is the main things in the Vietnamese family. And the parent put all their pride on the level of education that their children attain. So we have a lot of doctors, a lot of dentists, a 